All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel and to another slug test. And boy, do I really have something interesting today that I want to test out. I'm really curious to see what these can do in comparison to another test we've already done with a similar loading. And the load we have to test out today are some of the Salt Creek Custom 12 gauge, six pedal variety twister defensive slugs here. There are two and three quarter inch, 12 gauge, six pedal, which I'll show you up close in just a second and they're claiming 1400 feet per second. So we will see across the chronograph how close we actually get to that velocity. So here is that round. They're a two and three quarter low brass shell and I'll throw a picture up on the screen here, but they have six individual pedals in there that are designed to break apart and fragment off of the main base of the slug. So a really pretty neat looking design here. But if you have not seen, we did test the five pedal variety of those shells as well. I'll leave the card above for that if you wanna go check that out first. So I'm really curious to see how these do in kind of comparison to the five pedal. Now for the setup we're gonna be running, we're sticking with the same Remington 1187 Premier. Now, no, this is not a tactical shotgun. It is not a defense oriented shotgun or anything like that, but it can still absolutely do the job for what we need to do today. And in the end here, I decided to throw in a cylinder bore choke. So there's no constriction whatsoever in the end of this barrel right now, which is what they recommend on the Salt Creek website. Now, as for what we're going to test today, I do have the chronograph set up as you can see behind me here. So we will be running them across the chronograph. I'm gonna be doing a three shot group down here on a piece of paper to test accuracy and if you have not seen the last video, we tested the five pedal variant at 50 yards, which I said multiple times in that video, they are not designed to do that at all. I just wanted to see out of my own curiosity what they would do at that distance. So now for this test, we're gonna bring it in a little bit closer. We're gonna do 25 yard group. Now that's still a good chunk farther than your seven to 10 yard typical defense range. But if we shoot them at seven yards, they're all gonna wind up in the same hole with pretty much whatever we run them through as far as shotgun goes. And then for a bonus, I do have water jugs out here today as well. So we're gonna shoot them into some water jugs and see if we can catch the round or some of the petals that might fragment off and see what kind of penetration we're looking like. So first up, let's go over here and get set up on the chronograph and on the target and shoot our three shot group and see what kind of accuracy we're looking like at 25 yards this time. Okay, so let's run through our chronograph numbers real quick. Now remember the box called for 1400 feet per second. So for a high, we had 1406 which is right where the box calls for. But for a low, we had 1093. And as you can see, that 1126 was our last shot. So could that be the chronograph reading the little gas check at the back? Yeah, very possibly. But we did see at least one 1400 feet per second. So that gave us an average of 1208 for whatever it might be worth to you. But if I had to take a guess, they all feel very, very equal as far as recoil goes. So I'm thinking the chronograph is just reading the gas check or something of that nature. But let's go down to our target and see how accurate they were down there at 25 yards. Okay, we're down here now at our 25 yard target. And this nice shoot and see piece of paper right here is eight inches from edge to edge. And unfortunately, I did not bring a tape measure out with me today to measure it exactly. However, before I turned the camera on, I did kind of measure it with my hand. And that target being eight inches, all three of those shots are within eight inches. So call it seven to seven and a half inch group, somewhere in that range. But what I'm more looking at is maybe you can tell, especially with this shot right here, how kind of oblong it is. I don't think these are quite stable, which is pretty much what we saw in the last one too that we tested with the five pedal variant. So I definitely think that little bit of instability that they have definitely plays into our accuracy a little bit. But with that being said, call it a seven and a half inch group at 25 yards. If you needed to shoot that far in a defensive scenario, that would absolutely do the job on a man sized torso here. Definitely much, much better than we saw at 50 yards. So now let's head up here and try and shoot them through some water jugs and see what kind of energy and penetration we can get out of them. 
And I should mention real quick that this is what the little gas check piece looks like. Nothing really to note here. Now, if these were screwed to the base or connected to the base of that projectile, it would absolutely increase our accuracy for more of a hunting style scenario as well. But either way, nothing too special to see out of this one. All right, now I've come back up here, and as you can see, I've got all of our water jugs set up over here. There's seven jugs set up over here, whereas we had six last time, and we barely caught the projectile. So I was able to get seven out here. I'm going to be about 10 feet away from the target or so. That way I don't get absolutely drenched. And this is not a perfect test to simulate like ballistic gel or anything like that. But either way, we can still see what kind of energy dump we have out of them. So let's go over here, get set up, move all the cameras, get you guys a good view, and shoot some jugs and see what kind of explosion we get out of them. All right, well, here's what we got. And as you might be able to tell already, we had some interesting results out of this one. Our first jug here is just completely blown wide open and destroyed. No question about that. But our second jug is actually down here on the ground. And that jug is completely blown wide open too. But as you can see, it was definitely a nice centered shot. But by the time it hit this second jug, it either diverted courses or completely came apart. I mean, you might be able to see on camera there all the tiny little holes just everywhere here. So I definitely think we just came completely apart in the second jug. But our third jug is hiding right over here. And he is pretty torn open. But as you can see, this would have been our entrance hole right down here. So we definitely started to go off to the right at the very least, if nothing else. And there's nothing in this jug as far as lead goes or anything of that nature. I think we pretty much just exploded in that second jug with all the pieces. And this was our main chunk of the slug that just kind of diverted out of this right side edge over here. And our fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh jug are all untouched. They're still nice and full of water, nothing really to speak of other than they've been knocked over. Now as we come around to the other side of the table, we do see this little piece of one of the petals that fell out of one of the jugs and just laid right here on the table. That's definitely one of the little pieces of petal, but that's about all we caught out of this one. So I definitely think that six petal variant just came all to pieces. So definitely it seems like the six petal variant is a lot more reactive and a lot more explosive and it fragments a whole lot more or a whole lot different anyway than the five petal variant for sure here. All right, well, what did y'all think about the six petal twister slugs? I definitely think at least for reactiveness on jugs and energy dump and stuff like that, these six petal ones are just explosive, it would seem. It looked like once it got to that second jug, there was just pretty much nothing left except for a little piece of lead that just diverted itself right out the side. So that was really interesting to see compared to what the five petals did. So either way, what did you guys think? Would you use this slug for a defensive type scenario? I definitely thought it was interesting to see the difference between the six versus the five pedal but let me know what you guys think and i'm going to get back to doing some testing because i've got a bunch of other stuff i want to film for you guys so stick around because we've got plenty more coming and i'll see y'all in the next one